Dr. Beckingham, and welcome to my thyroid presentation. I encourage you to watch this next series of videos and learn more about your thyroid gland. You can always get more information at www.westlathyroiddoctor.com. I'd like to start by talking to you about your thyroid gland and what's going on with that. The thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland that sits right here on your neck. It is very important and every cell in your body has a receptor site for thyroid hormone. Without the hormone, you simply could not live. Okay, the thyroid supports bone metabolism, immune system function, it keeps you healthy and helps you fight off bacteria and viruses, brain and nervous system, endocrine system, all your adrenal glands, all your hormones come from the thyroid gland. It starts off the whole system to make other hormones in your body. Gastrointestinal function, a healthy thyroid helps all the food you eat get digested and go through your system so you can get all your nutrients and everything else like that. Liver and gallbladder function, okay? Your liver gets rid of all the poison in your body, but the hormones that it needs to drive get started way up in the thyroid gland. If you don't have a healthy thyroid, you're not gonna have a healthy liver and you're not gonna be able to process poisons out of your body. You're not gonna be able to make proper cholesterol levels for your body to digest food. You're not gonna be able to make bile to digest your food. Very important system. Growth and sex hormones start with the thyroid gland. Fat burning. People who don't have a thyroid working properly have trouble metabolizing fat. Insulin glucose. People have a bad thyroid, guess what? They end up being diabetic most of the time. A lot of my patients that come in my office, they see me, they have a whole list of symptoms, and it's thyroid, but it's diabetes, it's some other things, it's uh, constipation, it's digestive problems, it's hormone problems, all from the thyroid. Healthy, healthy cholesterol, again, going back to the liver, making cholesterol. Your cholesterol levels will be off if your thyroid's off, and proper stomach acid. Again, every cell in your body has a thyroid receptor site. Think about that. It's like a keyhole, and the thyroid hormone is the key that fits in that hole to make that cell go. It is what turns on that engine. Symptoms of hypothyroidism are thinning hair. It's a very common symptom. Tired and sluggishness. You can't seem to get through the day. Four or five in the afternoon, you start crashing. Uh, bowel difficulty, constipation, irregularity, not going to the bathroom. Only some people only go to the bathroom a couple times a week, so there's a problem with that. Depression, the things you used to enjoy, you don't enjoy anymore. You can't get up for the things that you want to do. Morning headaches, they burn off as the day goes on, but every morning you can count on having a headache. Weight gain, this is a big one. Thyroid glands aren't working properly, a lot of people come in and say, oh, I'm gaining this weight, I can't get rid of it, especially around my abdomen, a lot of weight around that area. Cold hands and feet is a very common one. Hot flashes, what's going on? Is it early menopause? No, or could it possibly be your thyroid? That is what it could possibly be. Mood swings, okay? You're happy one moment, you're sad the next, hey, it's all in your head. Guess what, it's not in your head, it's possibly your thyroid gland, okay? This is not just you going crazy. Nervous and emotional, you get very agitated easily. Uh, things upset you that shouldn't upset you. Someone cuts you off on the road and you're very upset about it. What's going on? Why are you anxious all the time? Possible thyroid symptoms right there. Insomnia, I'm staring at the ceiling at three in the morning. What's up with that? That's thyroid driving things. Night sweats, laying in bed, sweating all night. So all these symptoms, depression, insomnia, infertility could be a thyroid problem. Dry, brittle hair, hair loss, the loss of the outside of your eyebrows. Many, many symptoms. You need a lot of sleep even to function normally in the day. Some people need 12 hours of sleep just to function during the day. The standard medical treatment for thyroid goes back to the 1960s model. It was, we would test your TSH, your number's a little bit off, so I'm gonna give you some thyroid hormone. I mean, some Synthroid. Maybe some nature thyroid, okay? Have some armor. Hey, that's the real stuff. That's not synthetic, right? Okay. This model hasn't changed much. The drug names have changed. It's about time we change how we're handling the thyroid and hypothyroid symptoms. We have to look at the real cause for why we have this and not just start giving you medication and covering up the problem and pretending it's not there. It just makes sense that way, doesn't it? What's going on? Why is this happening? Why do one in five women seem to have hypothyroid problems? What's going on and what's the cause? That's what we're going to go through with this series. We're going to talk about some of this. Thyroid metabolism. Let's talk about the thyroid and what it does. First of all, your thyroid just isn't the thyroid doing the job. There's many components to this, all right? You have your hypothalamus, which releases thyroid releasing hormone. It's your pituitary, which then releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Think of this as the whip whipping the horse. The horse slows down. The horse in this case would be your thyroid gland. And the whip is the thyroid stimulating hormone. The pituitary is the jockey riding the horse, right? So if the horse slows down, you gotta whip, whip, whip it. That's the thyroid stimulating hormone. So the pituitary's job is to send out that hormone, which goes to the thyroid. The thyroid then produces T4. T4 comes right out of the thyroid. About 93% of what comes out of your thyroid would be T4. 
7% is T3. T3 is the active stuff. That's what all your cells in your body need is T3, okay? This T4 has to become T3 somewhere, and that doesn't even happen in your thyroid. That happens in your liver, mostly. 60% of T4 is converted to T3 in the liver, but then there's still some more T4 that has to be converted. That gets done in some of the peripheral tissue. It gets done in your, your GI tract, in your small intestine and colon. 20% just goes out as reverse T3. So your T4 has to become T3 to be used, active T3. So if you have a problem with your liver, you could have a problem with your thyroid, right? If you have a problem in your gastrointestinal tract, you're gonna have low thyroid numbers in your test. So the problem's not your thyroid at all, it's your liver, or it's your intestines, or it's your brain, your pituitary, your hypothalamus. We have to figure out what the problem is. It's not as simple as, hey, your thyroid doesn't work, take this medication. Your thyroid could be fine. So that's what we gotta look at a little deeper, and that requires proper testing and examination and diagnosis.